Come and join the circle. Come and take my hand. Come and join the circle. Come and be my friend. Gather round and see what the world can be. Come and join the circle. Come and share God's word with me. Hi, boys and girls. How are you today? Happy Tuesday. Happy circle time. I'm going to keep you guessing. I'm in a different place again this week. Maybe it looks a little bit familiar to you. It is the entrance of our church. That's right, in our little lobby, our foyer behind the church before you walk through the nice wooden doors to get inside. Happy Tuesday. I would like to talk to you today about alms giving. It's a big word, alms giving. First, I have a question for you. Do you ever think about becoming an athlete? Someone who does well or enjoys playing a sport? Doesn't matter what sport. Hockey, soccer, dancing, swimming. There are lots of sports. What do you think the secret to becoming a good athlete is? Hmm. I know, I know. Practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Those hockey players that you get to watch on TV, they play a lot of hockey and do some other things too to stay fit and to be really good at their game. Swimmers swim a lot. <laughs> yes, athletes practice a lot. Well, Pope Francis has encouraged us to become an athlete for Christ. And that takes a lot of practicing too. So the season of Lent gives us a great time to get better at the basic training practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We've talked about those this week and last couple of weeks, haven't we? Prayer, fasting, and our word this week, almsgiving. Three great tools that we can use to get to be better athletes for Christ. The word almsgiving, what does it mean? Do you know? The word alms, it's two words. Almsgiving is two words put together. Alms and giving. The word alms means something such as money or food that's given freely to relieve the poor, to help people. And the word giving, well, I think you know what giving means. Giving means just that, giving things to people. Or... Um, just giving, sharing, giving. We were encouraged all year long, but especially during Lent, to practice almsgiving, helping other people. A team can have many talented players, but to win, everyone has to work together. Same in the church. Everyone in God's family works together, but many people don't have enough food to eat or clean water to drink. Some people don't even have good beds to sleep in. And there's lots of people in our church that work together as a team to help fix that problem. When we train during the season of Lent, we can become more aware of others and how we can help them. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about tonight, to help you remember. Do you see the poster behind me, the nice picture of the world, our map? This is one way that many of us give alms and help people. There are other ways to do before I talk about that, there are other ways that people do almsgiving or help people during Lent. They can write letters, letters of gratitude, letters of thanks to someone who, is in, who has helped people or who is in need. They can say thank you. You could do something like clean out your closet and donate some of your toys to kids that don't have as many toys as you do. That's a really good thing to do. What about sharing your lunch or part of your lunch with someone who's forgotten theirs or doesn't have enough to eat? Another very good thing to do and forgiving someone who's hurt you. Those are all ways of, of doing almsgiving. My favorite way though is this poster behind me. Donating some of our money, our, our coins, to sponsor our Chalice children and their families. Both Jean, this is Jean, in the Philippines, and Alexis in Peru are very, very thankful that we send money to help their families so they can have food and a home and they can go to school. And it's been really hard this past year not coming to church because you guys were so good at taking your coins and putting them in that angel pot and sharing. Um, but there's some, been some people who've been helping to do that for you. They donate some money specifically to this project. 
However, for the rest of Lent, if you guys would like to save some of your coins, if that's okay with your mom and dad, um, and you want to donate it to our almsgiving project that we take on with these children, just tell your moms and dads to get a hold of me and I will find a way to get the coins from you and I'll make sure that they go to Alexis and to Jean and in the fund that pays for them and helps them go to school and have a home and all that good stuff. You could also drive by the church and the church office has a mailbox in the door and you could put money in an envelope or in a baggie through that door and Rebecca will help put it in the right place. Okay, so there's ways that we can do almsgiving and I challenge you to do that. But before we end our circle time tonight, I want to show you a sneak peek at something about this upcoming Sunday. Because this Sunday coming up is the fourth Sunday of Lent, Lent Latare Sunday. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So boys and girls, as I said, this Sunday is Latare Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Latare is a Latin word that means rejoice. I want to show you how we're going to celebrate that. There's a special thing in here. Come and see with me. We're going to walk in here oh, into the sacristy where Father keeps all of his beautiful vestments. So Latare is a Latin word for rejoice. It's a time of joy. Lent is half over. Half over. Can you believe it already? To show how special this Latare Sunday is, Father will wear a special vestment. Hmm, can you guess which color he's going to wear? Let's see if we can look at them. Here's the beautiful purple one he's been wearing up till now. Yep, you're right. It's this one. It's the rose-colored one. He gets to wear the rose, not pink. It's called rose. Just like on the third Sunday of Advent, Father will wear the rose-colored vestment. So this weekend, when you watch Mass online, uh, whether you watch our Mass here with Father Michael or you watch a different one somewhere else, you'll see the priest and he'll be wearing a rose-colored vestment. And you can think about rejoicing and, have, and you can be very joyful that Lent is over half over, almost over already. We're halfway there because we celebrate Latari Sunday and rejoicing. So boys and girls, as we end our circle time tonight, I want to remind you of the three words the three special practices of Lent to make us strong, to make us good athletes for Christ, as the Pope calls it. Prayer, fasting, giving things up, almsgiving, helping other people, whether it's through supporting our chalice children or some of the other ideas we talked about tonight. Let's close tonight singing our Lent song. Do you remember? I hope you remember it by now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we are meant to repent. Forty days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. This is Lent. This is Lent. Amen. God bless you, boys and girls. Have a great week leading into our Fourth week of, Ad of Lent already. Fourth week of Lent. God bless you. Bye.